Hey guys, Hamsubu here with a new video and today I'll be talking about what's so great about leveling in vanilla. I decided to do a separate video on this aspect of WoW Vanilla because I've seen this topic pop up over and over again on both my videos, live streams and whatnot. And the reason why I want to talk about it is because there's usually a lot of confusion from retail players on why anyone would like leveling in the oldest version of World of Warcraft. And to be fair, I can kind of see why. You see, on paper, it doesn't sound all that appealing. You barely do any damage. Even normal mobs can kill you quite easily if you don't watch out. There's a lot less flight paths. You go out of mana much quicker. Your abilities are way less powerful. The list just goes on and on. So, as someone who leveled in vanilla all the way back in 2004, and as someone who's done it multiple times on private servers, allow me to explain what's so great about it. So, for starters, let's talk about the mana issues. Ever since Wrath of the Lich King, they kind of revamped the spells so they cost far less mana. You could spam Lightning Bolt for days and not worry about going out of mana anytime soon, which definitely helped in speeding up the leveling. In vanilla though, you went out of mana very quickly. At level 1, you could only cast 2-4 to four spells, and that's it. You were out of mana, which basically meant that after almost every mob, you had to regenerate mana, and it's not like this was just the first few levels. Even after level 15 or so, you still had mana issues for most of the classes, and this trend continued all the way up to max level, which was level 60. Was this good? Well, in some way it wasn't. I mean, it was definitely tedious, but there is an aspect that I enjoy of not having mana for days, because it did mean you had to take an extra look at your spells, figure out which ones were more mana efficient than the others, and then choosing a proper rotation. It meant you spent more time analyzing and learning about your spells and becoming better in what spells to prioritize depending on what situation you're in. Unlike today's WoW where you can just spam whatever spell you want and you're usually fine in terms of mana. I guess that's what it boils down to. The increased mana cost meant you couldn't just spam spells willy nilly and it required you to take a step back and really figure out a nice rotation for you to follow. Another quick thing I'd like to add is that because of the high mana cost the spells really gave that feeling like they had a lot of weight behind them. Think of Chain Lightning, which was very mana expensive, or Pyroblast, which had a 6 second cast time for crying out loud. Again, on paper those two things sound horrible, but those two spells really felt like heavy hitters. Something which you couldn't use all the time, so you had to figure out exactly when and where to use those spells. While we're on the subject of spells and abilities, I'd also like to talk about the fact that they didn't nearly do as much damage as, let's say, the more modern versions of WoW. For instance, here's aimed shot in Cataclysm. You see, almost one shot that mob. Now here's aimed shot in WoW Vanilla. Yeah, quite the difference, right? You couldn't just rely on a few quick spells to kill a normal mob. Oh no, you better watch out and take your time to kill those mobs accordingly. There was no running in and AoEing the whole damn place. There was no mindlessly spamming abilities and coming out on top. In Vanilla, Killing mobs needed coordination and planning, especially if you wanted to kill multiple mobs at the same time. There was careful CCing involved, sometimes even odd items that you obtained from a quest beforehand. I know that there's a few exceptions to this rule. For instance, Frost Mages with Improved Blizzard who, if played properly, could AoE down packs of mobs. But like I said, this was definitely the exception. Generally speaking, you really had to keep your eyes open and kill mobs at a slow pace if you didn't want to die over and over again. So these two points combined, what do they boil down to? You were a lot weaker in Vanilla WoW. And trust me on this, it was awesome. Why? Well, if you on your own are too weak, it means you have to call for help from other people. That leads to groups being formed, people socializing, small teams of players working together and strategizing on how to kill a certain pack of mobs. It was one of the things that really contributed into making World of Warcraft feel like a proper MMORPG. Now because we just talked about you being weak as a player, it allows us to segue nicely into the next topic, gear. Gear in vanilla mattered, especially at lower level. Look, I'm not trying to say that gear doesn't matter in today's WoW. There's always going to be that hunt to get that awesome axe, or getting that sweet new tier set to increase your damage and your bragging rights. What I'm trying to say is that gear made a huge difference in vanilla WoW, especially in early levels. Like I said, you weren't very strong on your own, so any gear upgrade you got really mattered. Getting a blue item back in vanilla was an amazing experience, 
and it could potentially make a huge difference on just how much damage you were able to do. Hence why there's so many low level items many vanilla players remember as being amazing. A few examples? How about the Whirlwind Axe, the Illusionary Rod, the Crescent Staff, the Black and Defia set, and the Sword of Omen and Vanquisher Sword combined? Oh yeah, that sweet, sweet combo every rogue wanted to have in their high 30s and low 40s. So what about the more modern expansions? Well, I played expansions like Cataclysm and Mispinaria, and on both these expansions I didn't really care about any of that stuff dropping in lower level dungeons. Why would I care? Leveling is piss easy, so the necessity of getting an item upgrade is pretty much gone. And above that, I have heirlooms. The difference is night and day. In vanilla I always got super excited if I got a nice blue item from a dungeon. In later expansions I was just like, eh, that's pretty nice I guess. The incentive to run lower level dungeons for gear was gone for me. Something which I absolutely loved in vanilla, hence why I had to bring this up. Speaking of dungeons, in vanilla they were actually quite hard. These days the go-to strategy for clearing dungeons is for the tank to pull a pack of mobs and then everyone AOEing it down. The healer barely has to do anything, hell I've seen dungeons in Mr. Benaria where the healer was AFK half the time and we still cleared it, and the DPS could most of the time go wild with AOEing and not worry about threat too much. In vanilla though, oh boy, there was barely any AOEing going on. Mobs had to be killed one by one due to the way threat worked. Tanking abilities didn't nearly generate as much threat, and several tanking abilities we have now didn't even exist back then. This meant the DPS had to be very, very careful with their damage or else it would be a wipe. Hell, back then it was even common that the healer would over aggro by just healing the tank, which resulted in many, many dungeon wipes. This meant that dungeons in vanilla took a lot of time to clear and the overall pace was slow, which can be quite annoying if you don't have 2 hours for every single dungeon. But that being said, it once again forced people to not mash buttons mindlessly. Pulls were done very carefully, mainly by the tank who pulled them with a ranged weapon and then stood behind the corner to line aside the mobs in order to bring them back so the DPS could kill them at a safe distance. And you know what? It was awesome. I can't tell you how much of a face roll lower level dungeons feel in more modern expansions. There's no thinking involved and it really feels like everybody is just randomly tapping buttons. No one's learning any type of coordination, any type of planning, timing their interrupts, carefully watching their threat, nothing. In vanilla though, all those factors were mandatory in even the simplest of dungeons. They were a lot less forgiving and I loved it. I loved it because dungeons being a struggle meant that once you cleared it, you felt a sense of accomplishment. You were happy that your team decided to stick together, that you all had to earn your gear by really working together as a team. It paved the way for the eventual raid content that was upon you once you reached level cap. So, time to talk about quests. Now, let me be fair in saying that Blizzard really stepped up their game in the more modern expansions regarding quests. First off, there's more of them in every zone, giving you more options on what quests you want to do or not. Second, they have much more variety, with way more dialogue, cinematics, the use of vehicles and whatnot. The quests in vanilla? Well, in terms of what you had to do, they were admittedly a little stale. The majority of the quests were just simple killing and gathering quests. But there were a few things I definitely liked about them. First of all, you didn't get a giant floating blue circle on your map telling you exactly where to go. Sure, it's convenient, but I don't really like the idea of having everything spoon fed to me. Back in vanilla you actually had to read the quest text and they would give you a general idea of where to look but no exact location. This meant you actually had to explore and look around, rather than following an icon on your map. Oh by the way, does anyone remember the class quests? One of my favorite is probably the warrior quest chain, where you had to go to an island in the barrens to do quests for new abilities. Or what about having to go to Moonglade as a druid? With those types of quests, it really felt like you were a young student of whatever class you played, ready to embark on a new journey to learn more about your class and become more powerful. It made it so you just didn't get your skills, you had to earn them. You had to prove yourself. Some of these quests were kind of annoying, and I'm looking at you, Call of Water quest. Seriously, f*** that quest. But all joking aside, it did give the classes a bit of uniqueness and a bit of extra flavor. 
So, in short, what I like about the quest is the unique class quest and the fact that you really had to explore the world and look around rather than blindly follow the objectives on your map. And last but not least, PvP. Oh yeah, someone like me who generally doesn't like PvP is gonna tell you why PvP made leveling in vanilla so awesome. Just hear me out. Now I don't really like being ganked by a rogue when I'm doing a quest. Matter of fact, I find it kinda annoying. But, that being said, wasn't it kinda epic knowing that danger could be right around the corner? Wasn't it kind of exciting knowing that once you leave your town, you could very well be attacked at any second by an enemy player? One of the moments that always got me was when I would leave Gromgol base camp in Stranglethorn Vale. You'd feel safe and protected by the guards and the walls of Gromgol, but as soon as you went out of the gate, it was a free-for-all. The chance of a rogue backstabbing you or a mage sniping you from a distance was present at all times, and it kept me on my toes all the way through the higher leveling zones in vanilla. There was no option to turn PvP off. If you rolled on a PvP server, that's what you get. You get ganked, fight back. You keep getting killed, call for help or quest somewhere else. You don't like PvP, go play on a roleplay server. In other words, deal with it. World PvP back then was just part of the game, especially because in early vanilla there weren't even any battlegrounds. World PvP was alive and well, and it created epic battles all over the world. Think about Blackrock Mountain, Stranglethorn Vale, Crossroads vs Ratchet, Tara Mill vs South Shore, the insane PvP battles that erupted at world bosses or at the entrance of battlegrounds. Stuff like this is very high on the memory list of vanilla players, and we probably wouldn't have ever seen these epic battles if we had the option to just turn off PvP. I mean, again, it's nice and convenient, but with the addition of being able to kill mobs without a sweat, the world just doesn't feel dangerous anymore. There's no excitement anymore when leveling in the world, if people are even leveling in the world at all, cause let's face it, pretty much everyone is just spamming dungeons over and over again in their capital city. So there you go, some of the reasons why leveling in vanilla was so damn awesome. I guess it boils down to the fact that you started as a complete zero. Everything from 1 to 60 was a challenge. You didn't get anything, you earned it. From gear, certain skills, gaining a level, reputation, mounts, everything required a lot of effort and because it did, it felt like a huge accomplishment. That's why people love leveling in vanilla so much. It was tricky and challenging but ever so satisfying. And that's pretty much the end of this video. So I'll ask it to you then. What did you like the most about leveling in WoW Vanilla? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I want to thank you for watching this video. I'm Hamster Wheel and have a good one.